So, on the second travel trip of my gap year, I headed up the east coast of Australia for eight weeks. From crazy islands to long overnight buses to meeting the best people, I'm so honoured to take you guys along on the adventure. Guys, we went to a camping shop, got a hammer, got two sleeping bags and got a tent. Yes! Currently waiting for the bus and we've got a lot more stuff than we should have. We've technically got more bags than the Greyhound bus allows, so fingers crossed we get on okay. We're in Byron. We speedily had a meal at the best vegan cafe ever and then we did some research and found out which bus was going to the best. And we're on our way to Paul's Fest. We don't really look best dressed. Everyone was dressed amazingly, like literally Coachella, and we were sweaty messes. We were actually the laughing stocks of the bus because we had so much stuff. So we have just checked. Too long, too long in this heat. It is like 30 something degrees. We've got our ID, we've got our tickets, and we've just been carrying like this. But I think we found a spot where we're gonna camp. Guys, we're at the fest. It took us an embarrassingly long time to put this tent up. We did it wrong twice, like didn't put the poles in the right place. Success, finally, yeah. Time to get fest ready. By this point, I had not washed my hair in days. I had been going in the sea like all the time. My parting was a mess. I had so much dandruff because of sunburn, but somehow guys, we made it work. <laughs> okay, so we're all ready. I've got my limited makeup that I packed on my face right now. First time ever having this little jazzy hairstyle. And we're gonna go see Dizzy Rascal. We're gonna see 88 Rising. We're ready, ready to go. Golden hour. <laughs> We then went and explored the fest. There was the big valley stage, there was loads of little stages, really cute, tempting food stalls. Just wandered around for a bit and then headed to the main stage. to find out that Dizzy Rascal cancelled literally just before he was meant to go on and he was the big New Year's Eve act and then here is a story for you okay so this countdown that you're seeing for New Year's did not actually happen when New Year's hit the act on stage got it wrong and they missed New Year's so everyone in the crowd could see on their phones that it was midnight but they just kept singing and we were not very pleased and then at about 10 past midnight they randomly did the countdown with the confetti cannons <laughs> Yeah, they had one job. We then spent the rest of the groovy night going to all the mini stages. We checked out what's called DJ, danced the night away, good times. Good morning. It looks idyllic, but in reality, we did not sleep very well. It was freezing at night, and then you'd wake up, and by about 7 a.m., it was like 50 degrees in your greenhouse of a tent. We had to hang our heads out of the tent. Just had a shower in the camping showers. Got ourselves a bit refreshed, but I'm still feeling tired. <laughs> it's so hot. I had to adopt a ponytail, it was too hot. Oh, you look so good on camera. Don't care if I go over Thank you. Oh, that looks so good. One of the biggest mysteries of the fest was the laundromat. We kept seeing people queue for it, and we were so confused why people were queuing to do their laundry. I have no idea what this laundromat is, but let's just, let's go inside a washing machine, Kerry. Yeah. Let's do it. Magical washing machine. No one gave anything away. There was a full-on shopkeeper. There were washing machines you could pay for. <laughs> As the fest went on, this became our new favourite hangout. <laughs> Guys, Kerry bought glitter. Look. Oh. I've stuck it on with Vaseline. And it worked. Silent Disco, Palm Springs, Beach, Water Park, Beach Volleyball. 
yeah, I don't know what our plan is now. I think we're just gonna head, do something, and then eat again because that's like the highlight of our day is eating. Yeah. Are we at a festival or are we at the beach? You decide. We chilled and sunbathed, or should I say sunburnt? <laughs> This is where the fest started to get fun because we made friends with this amazing guy called Jacob. Coolest guy, best dancer, best energy. We formed a little squad. An issue you have when backpacking Australia is that most people you meet are going to be backpackers from around the world, but not Australia. That's why it was so nice to go to a festival that wasn't a tourist thing. It was pretty much all Australians. It was the first time that we actually became friends with Australian people. Hey guys, so once again, I'm filming with the flash. Very, very bright. Like, looking at this is not not easy right now but um yeah we're in the tent and we've had such a good day such a good night um we basically became friends with this guy called jacob we met him at the forest stage because we were really going for it with the dancing and he just came over and was really going for it we like formed this little group we got on so well with him that he ended up like coming with us for like just to eat and stuff and then we spent the whole rest of the night with him and his friends i wish i could just like capture the moments where we were dancing and just like keep them because there were some really good, good moments. So we were just jamming, jamming out to some bands that I had never heard of before, like Australian bands, but they were really good. Really tired now, it's 3 a.m. As you do, still functioning on like four or five hours of sleep. So still hopefully we get some sleep. Still getting up every morning. <sighs> I am. Also, I've got into the habit of doing this, the shocker thing. I do it all the time now, all the time. Far out. <laughs> anyway, good night guys. Day three of Fool's Fest tomorrow. Oh, I look magnificent this morning. So we woke up at about, well, I woke up at about 10, um, which means I got more sleep than I did the night before. So I'm happy with that. It's kind of a baking sauna in here right now, um, but we're just currently going on our phones, chilling for a bit. The longer we wait, then we can combine breakfast and lunch together in one meal so that we don't have to pay as much money to feed ourselves. Might go have a shower in the gorgeous, dirty camping showers later. <laughs> some Dutch plaits going, you know, ripping the Dutch vibe. Kerry has such beautiful long hair, like it's so long. Like the plaits look so nice. So guys, the secret to a good Dutch plait, as well as it being like neat and everything, is to pancake it at the end. Let me show you. So this side I've not pancaked yet, this side I have. So you can see they're like out a bit. Basically go along and pull out the sides. Like bus fly, looks nice. I don't know why my hair is so crispy. I think the combination of just dirt from like the dancing and sweat and everything, it's just like feels like I've sprayed loads of hairspray on it, but oddly. It's just, it's made it curlier. We then got glittered up again. Harry brought this whole pack of glitter from home, so we just stuck it on with Vaseline. So we're on our way to meet up with Jacob, who is our good friend from yesterday. Him and his friends are in another campsite, so we're gonna go see them. This is kind of a way Hey guys, oh no, let's get rid of that, okay. Hey guys, so this is Jacob. Hello. Jacob, do you want to explain how we met? We met at Touch Sensitive, which is a band that plays in Australia at Falls Festival at Byron Bay. And we just danced the night a long way. We and watched Hit Top Pods, which is amazing. We were like dance partners. Yeah, we were. Like, we were. he inspires my dancing. But like, <laughs> we had the energy and we were just like going for it. It was so good. And now it's the next day. And now we're just hanging with all your friends. We're just drinking and having a good time. It's such a good fest and it's so easy to meet people. It is, it is. I mean, Jade here has been so much fun to dance with. She's a good dancer as well. I'm an awful dancer. <laughs> I like, I have the energy and I pretend I'm a good dancer. But like, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Jacob is genuinely a good dancer. Like, he's done ballet. What else Tap, hip-hop, hip jazz. 
uh, some musicals you in Broadway. You can do Broadway. hand stuff. Yeah, you've been on Broadway. I can't compete with that. A little bit like here and there, which I'm very thankful for. Many other people who share stories and, uh, you know, explain where you're from and where you've been and what you've done. And you just keep the conversation running. And it's absolutely Yeah, crazy. and it's like, it's easier than you think, I think. Because like, everyone wants to meet people here. Yeah. Yeah. My cousin, Amy Cotty, knows who Jade is. And she's one of, crazy. Her, favorite, one of her favorite YouTubers in the UK. So. I, uh, I put a photo of uh, Jacob up on my Instagram. <laughs> and yeah. like, his cousin like messaged Responded. him. Yeah. He's like, is that Jade? It's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> That's it. Another good day ahead. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Ready guys, where are we going? We're going to Galaxy Stage Triple One, yo! <laughs> <laughs> we later went to the laundromat together and I got to see Jacob come to life on the dance floor. It was great. Good times. <laughs> We went round with Jacob's Sunshine Coast friends. It was like Just Dance 2.0. And then we all had a little lunch and just went round all the stages and just chilled in the sun. I got to see Africa by Toto live. And then I was watching churches and I started to feel a bit funny. I literally look back at this and just laugh. That is me in the Medicare unit of Force Festival, wrapped in a silver sheet like I've just come out of a race. Got water everywhere. <laughs> the story is to come. I feel like I've just come out of a marathon, except I haven't. I just was sick. Hey there guys. Um, so, as you know, I do like to keep it quite real on this channel. Um, so even though this is, I don't know, not a very nice tale, I'm gonna tell it anyway. It's the third night of the fest. It's currently 11.20 p.m. I've just added my torch to get some more light in here, so hi. I don't have a lot of experience with alcohol, like, in general. Today he, like, introduced us to his whole group of friends. They're such nice people. We, like, went to their campsite. They were really nice, and they, like, offered us some of their drinks, right? We had some drinks. Throughout the day, like, I had, I think I had two cocktails. I had, like, a few other random things. Again, I never got... Oh, Carrie's just brushing her teeth. That's the sound in the background. Yeah, like, throughout the day, I never felt, like really drunk either but at the end of the day i ended up in the medicare unit tonight which is yeah didn't think that would happen <laughs> um so basically we were with our friend um and we went and we got dinner and for dinner i chose just about the fattiest greasiest food that you could have it was like tempura mushrooms i had like five minutes to try and eat the whole thing and then after that we didn't sit and let it digest we just went and like partied again, party tags since the last night. Felt a bit sicky, hardly drank any water today and it was really boiling and I guess I was dehydrated, didn't feel it, but apparently I was. We were watching the act churches and I started just to feel like a wave of nausea. I felt really sick, but I like suppressed it because I was like, oh no, I'm fine. Like I, 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 mentally, I didn't feel at all different. I was like, oh no, I'm fine. Five minutes later, I was not fine had to run out of the crowd like we were in the center of the front of the crowd i even whacked into this girl and spilt her whole full drink on her and i felt so bad but i needed to vomit so much that it didn't matter i was just like i'm so sorry i feel so sick and then i just like ran out and like kerry is really nice and came with me and then i just sat on like the side and this security guard who was so nice shout out to casper basically helped me while i was sick and at first i thought i'd been like drugged or something i was like oh my god i was getting really paranoid 
but no, it's fine. She gave me like a little red frog sweet and I drank some water. So yeah, that's my story. So partying for the night is done. My head really hurts. And I think all it was, was I just had Mushrooms. too many. Huh? Mushrooms. The, it was the mushrooms. That sounds like me talking about a drug, guys. It was the mushrooms. I didn't drink enough water today. And it basically, I just had too many little bits of loads of different types of alcohol. So lesson learned, guys, don't drink loads of different types of alcohol. Don't do it. Like, don't mix your drinks. Unless you have a really high tolerance for alcohol, which I clearly don't. So yeah, there's my story. Um, keeping it real just because i don't think anyone really talks about like their first experiences with alcohol like ever really like if you drink loads underage then i get why you wouldn't talk about it because you're underage but i think i would have liked to hear stuff like this so there it is it wasn't really uh oh i have like <laughs> you look nice you look at that my suit of crap <laughs> but it wasn't like a drunken drunken time and the security guard <laughs> he clearly was like thinking i'd taken something or like drank loads <coughs> or like he was like i'm not your dad like you can tell me like don't worry and i was like i really haven't drank that much like i really haven't and i kept saying i was like i'm literally mentally fine right now like i'm not intoxicated and he just looked at me like, I, I bet this that's what absolutely everyone says that was the story right we're gonna go to bed now um our lovely friend that we met jacob i feel so bad i ditched him in the crowd um i've texted him now don't worry who are the people outside the tent? Okay. Hey. Good morning, guys. Um, I feel like my skin is melting off. It is so hot. And today we leave the fest. So, oh, bless you, Kerry. It is very dusty here. So I'm going to start dismantling the tent while Kerry still packs her stuff. But yeah, I feel a lot better today. I feel like a bit, a bit dead, but also fine. Like, I don't feel sick. We're going to explore Bar and Bay later. Pretty much everyone in the campsite is already gone, like everyone around us, so we're a little bit late. Hey ho, at least I got, I think for the first time on this whole trip, nine hours sleep, so it's not bad. Oh, also tip, when you're putting away your sleeping bag, make sure you stuff it, not roll up your sleeping bag and then try and put it in. It is so much easier to stuff it in, it's quicker, it always works, whereas rolling it can just like take forever and then you can't fit it in. So that's my D of E tip to you. So we're back at our favourite place with the best staff ever. Guys, if you're in Byron Bay, come to this place, Manor Haven, because it's right by the bus stop. The people are so nice and the food is bloody incredible. <laughs> and look who's here, it's Jacob. He found us again in Byron. I try. <laughs> <laughs> Could you look more Australian with yeah, your hat? I love this it. This hat is my Christmas hat. I got this for Christmas. Hello, my name is Jacob. We just finished here at a cafe at Manor Haven. So just a beautiful, time listening to music and talking catching up with some friends of mine <laughs> and honestly ready to go home soon so we just came back from the Falls Festival all good things must come to an end we're on a mini road trip yay <laughs> Jacob was so kind and took us to our hostel and I was buzzing to stay at another wake up they also had an all you can eat sushi night for ten dollars that night so we clocked that <laughs> I'm so impressed. I don't know where we're going, but... Wait, 5.04? We're 5.01, so we're probably here, Kerry. Yes, 5.01. I think Jacob's wishing he was staying here now. Before Jacob had to drive back to the Sunshine Coast, we went to the beach right next to the hostel. Before Jacob has to leave. The beach was beautiful and I can just remember feeling so happy. We were in a full room and I got top bunk. Kerry was over there on bottom bunk. There was an American guy, Preston, sleeping over there, so we had to be quiet. That is mosh pit right there. <laughs> Elbow to the face. Oh. Hi. I've got a hammock. Oh my gosh. I'm in a hammock in Australia. What the hell? I'm in a little nature grove in a hammock. Wow. 
Life is good, guys. Life is good. <laughs> that night, Kerry was understandably shattered, so kind of wanted to stay in the room. But I fancied sushi, so I went out and I met some nice people, sat down, ate sushi. I went with Preston from our room and we just sat down and made friends. I also met Maraid. Shout out to Maraid, who recognised me from my channel. And this is not the last I would see of Maraid. That's the funny thing about the East Coast, is it's definitely a community. Our room stayed up <laughs> chatting for ages because we all just got on so well. And I met Mariana the amazing <laughs> Scottish gal. And I probably should have gone to bed earlier because the next day we were waking up at 5 a.m. for a sunrise lighthouse walk. Literally so cool that Wake Up does all these free events. But yeah, it was a free lighthouse walking tour and they shuttle bus you up there. The views were utterly insane. Like it's the kind of thing you could just sit and watch for hours. So beautiful, I don't even know what to say. Just like, just sit and appreciate it. The camera doesn't even capture like the half of it. <laughs> even though it wasn't the clearest of days, it was still gorgeous. It's actually so beautiful for like after that we followed a whole trail back to the hostel. Most easterly point of Australian mainland. We made it. Oh, Kerry, the tour's gone. It took us through the forest, it took us along the beach. We've just been sat at the hammock FaceTiming our friend. It's actually like really nice to be up early for the first time in so long because you forget how many hours there are in the day. Yeah, we just FaceTimed her. I'm sun creaming up because I'm gonna do yoga at 9 a.m. Isn't it amazing? Normally we wake up at like 9 a.m. traveling. But yeah, everyone in our room is so nice. I love just sitting chatting with them. Just on yoga, just had a shower. And now our plan is to rent some bikes because somehow they have free bike rent here, which is crazy. Go into Byron Bay and like explore the town and the shops a bit. And then I think I might also try and hire a surfboard because they're free to hire here as well. I feel like I just need to make the most of it. So yeah, active day ahead, probably the most active. So we signed up for two bikes, grabbed the bikes and made our way to Byron. We'd also done some research just on TripAdvisor with some places that we could aim to go see. But yeah, I wish we had longer in Byron. It was only like the two days. And now we're in Byron. The app Happy Cow is how I'm finding all the best vegan places. <laughs> I'm like a walking advert for this place. I just never take it off. Of course, we had to explore some of Byron's beautiful hippie shops. And then we went and did a food shop, bought some dinner to cook, bought some laundry powder, very nice. Laundry time. All my stuff from the festival is just disgusting. I have a white bralette that is now brown. Just gonna hit up the laundry facilities. And something about Australian laundry, unfortunately it's all in two dollar coins, like always. We had to go to reception and like change some cash into two dollar coins, otherwise it just won't work. I'm gonna go cook our luxury meal in the kitchen. And I'm literally obsessed with our room. I love our room so much. Like, it's just amazing. It's like all girls and one guy and everyone in the room is amazing. They're just so nice. so much. While eating our dinner we just socialised and then we ended up getting roped into a drinking game. It was called Slaps and it was really fun and I would highly recommend it. I then went out clubbing with the whole of our room but Kerry decided to stay in and sleep which is very cool. I think you have to be really honest with yourself and make your own decisions when you're travelling with a friend because what one person wants to do one night the other person might not want to do. Kind of compromise. We literally have our own outdoor little area. How cute is this? Like this whole little thing is just for us. So nice. And there's like a little hammock you can draw across. Ah. Here are all the lockers. And somehow we have the nicest bathroom I've ever seen in a hostel. It's like a spa bath. I was a bit manky, but like a spa bath. One of my highlights was finding this little swing by the beach and just sitting there swinging and contemplating my life and feeling very grateful to be in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> 